Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I'm Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? How is it going? Uh, it's going. Yeah. We're, we're surviving over here. Yeah. Um, Mom's home. Oh, nice. So, that's good. Do you even know about it? I have not a clue, Maybe man. Maybe not. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, I haven't I seen you all know. week, actually. Yeah, it's, we, uh, yeah, we've both been very busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I don't know if this is necessarily podcast tacos to start with a downer, uh, but uh, my mom... Those of you out there that know anybody in my family might have gotten the impression that we're we're a stubborn lot. <laughs> um, so my mom was having like real severe uh, abdominal pains a little over a week ago, starting last Friday, not yesterday Friday, but the Friday before. Yeah, and um, and it got worse and worse, and she was like, "Well, I can just I can make it through the weekend. I can suffer through this till till Monday when I can go see my doctor." Uh-huh. And she did, and her doctor said, "Okay, well, <coughs> I mean." I think I know what the problem is, but we're going to go do a CT and some blood work at the hospital and, oh, and wow. make sure that everything's okay. Yeah. and uh, Or not okay. It's what I think it is. I, yes. I think everybody knew it was not okay. Yeah. Um, so it turns out that uh, she had appendicitis, and oh. she had put it off too long, and her, her appendix had burst. Oh, no. Yeah. So they then they were like, okay, well, you're going to surgery right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> And uh, so that's that's how my ah. that's how my Monday went. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got wow. this like weird text from my dad that had almost no information in it except mom's going into surgery. Oh wow! And <laughs> and then I kept asking questions and not getting responses. Not getting answers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't so, you love that? Yeah, um, but it, it all worked out. I wasn't well, sorry that good. day. Yeah, she's she's. I mean, she's still sore and oh, so yeah. forth. But um, but she's but, home. But she she's home. okay. Yeah. yeah, she came home yesterday. Yeah. So. Well, good. Um, yeah, wow. yeah, I had no clue any of that was going on. Sorry, there. <laughs> man. I just I assumed that I had told you at some point, but I I think we only I guess we only talked like once or twice and on the phone. And yeah, it was not. Yeah, and it, it was, was uh, brief. We can't do this tonight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It definitely wasn't. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's what. That's well, I'm glad she's doing like. better. Doing yeah. well, man. Uh, yeah. She she'll probably listen to this in a couple of weeks. I think she stays perpetually behind a few episodes behind, but yeah, whatever. So she didn't. She's not like up on the news that we're reporting here <laughs> yeah um speaking of being up on the news that we're reporting uh somehow last week we completely left out the whole bolton leaving thing oh man yes we did how yeah. did, how we did that i don't know because that was like a yeah man can't ask for it to get any better than that well <laughs> <laughs> that was like the best news of the day yeah, like, that was good at news. the time like um and uh you know there was like bolton was terrible um yeah. Like really, truly terrible. And while it could not get better, yeah. that is a poor way of phrasing that. Yeah. Um, while it doesn't necessarily get better with a new appointment, yeah. it really couldn't get worse. Yeah. Right? See, I like haven't he, done any research on this guy at all. I don't know what we're getting into. Well, I, I have, and it's more the same, really. Is it? Um, but I, I did want to point out, because I thought this was funny. <coughs> uh, I was reading on... Um, the Moon of Alabama blog, he had a little post about Bolton leaving, which wasn't really about Bolton leaving. It was it was mostly a callback to previous um, articles he'd written about Bolton over uh, the years. Yeah. Uh, but they do a comments section, and it's usually a fairly informed group of people that are that are that commenting are there. Yeah. on there. And um, but there was some stuff in there that I, I thought was funny. Um, now um, Bernard, that writes the blog, he had expressed some optimism about uh who would replace bolton yeah. um that you know it can't get worse than this essentially and like okay we, we yeah. we're gonna have some improvements in american foreign policy after this and and so forth yeah. and um there was somebody else in the uh in the comments that said something along the lines of um that i, I wouldn't be so confident about the replacement it seems like every time trump makes a new appointment it's somehow worse than the last one <laughs> and then the person underneath them said well, maybe Voldemort or Palpatine's available for the job. <laughs> and it yeah. just it made me laugh. Um, it cracked me up. Because it's so true. Because it really, I, I mean, that had the, it should reset. Like, so, like, Bolton should have been the top because mm-hmm. you're not going to, like, rewrite John McCain or whatever. So, like, Bolton should be the top and it should reset down to the bottom and then build again. Yeah. <laughs> we would hope. Of course, of course, now we know that's not the case. Yeah, it's not the case. Um, um, I am the, disappointed, though, because it did kind of seem like Trump may go a different direction because he talked 
from what I understand, like Trump was fully aware that you have a look. No, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> the, the, um, what Bolton was. Like it wasn't like Bolton was some kind of like he didn't realize that Bolton's a war hog. Like, yeah. Because apparently that like the, that was the big joke is every time they were talking about stuff, Trump's response to Bolton is, so are we going to nuke him? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I think it was kind of forced upon him in some ways. I mean, but nothing really is. He could find people. There are people available oh, yeah. for this job that hold more closely to Trump's views. I mean, or at least I'd, what he expressed on the campaign trail and what well, he's expressed at least sometimes while in office. And I had kind of hoped maybe he'd tap Rand Paul for it. Not that I thought that was a real likely scenario. Yeah. He does seem to confine in Rand some, though, when it comes to these matters. He's yeah. sending to go do stuff before on his behalf and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, not that, you know, hold yeah. your breath. You know? Well, I wonder if he just, like, picks the extremes, though, because his golfing buddies are Lindsey Graham and Rand Paul. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you couldn't have two people that are further apart here. No, nah, at least not in the Republican Party. And yeah. I, yeah. So, I, I don't know. But the, the guy he ended up appointing is um, is Robert O'Brien. Okay. Um, Robert O'Brien was with the W. Bush State Department. Really? And uh, he was Mitt Romney's foreign policy advisor on his campaign. Okay. Um, and he has, from what I can tell, now there's not a whole lot of information that I could find out there on this guy. I mean, I, I didn't do a real deep dive, but, yeah. you know, I, I read some older articles uh, profiling him and, and his positions on some things. And I, he wrote a book, apparently. Um, I can't remember the title of it, but the title kind of tells you everything. I should have written it down. Um, yeah. The title kind of tells you everything that you need to know. I mean, he's, his positions are essentially the same as what you would expect from a neocon. Yeah. He's pro NATO because it gives us an excuse to have military assets in Europe. Right. And <laughs> yeah. export security to Europe. Yeah. Um, he's anti UN because, you know, sometimes they tell us that we can't do stuff that we want to do. Yeah, so. Um, and he's, he's absolutely in Iran hawk. Yeah. Um, he wants to maintain presence in Afghanistan. He, he, as far as he's concerned, it is a forever war. He doesn't yeah. think that we could ever leave that place. Um, he uh, wants to expand our activity in Africa so that we can oppose China in Africa. Uh, he's one of these people that still believes that um, Obama stripped the military <laughs> and and yeah. you know made us weaker as a nation and so forth, even though Obama spent... More, more than his predecessor. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he expanded. Like, it was under Obama that we had the big surge in Afghanistan. where We had 100,000 yeah. troops in that country at yeah. one point under Obama. And there were some cuts in military spending, but not so much. Yeah. And the, I mean, the truth is that it essentially what had been covered under military spending was being covered under other departments. It's not like... It was really more like title changes than it was. Yeah, exactly. Like, you move money from one pot to another pot. You didn't actually, like, stop... You didn't cut the money. You just, like, changed where... It's the name of where it's going. Yeah, so... Um, I, I don't know that it'll get any better. In fact, in some ways, I like I worry about this more because everybody knew, everybody knew what Bolton was. Oh yeah, Bolton yeah. was in the spotlight because everybody knew because, what Bolton yeah. was. So exactly. it, everybody looked at Bolton, everything that he was doing, and so forth. It, it got a lot of coverage. Yeah. And this guy, nobody really knows. He doesn't stand out in the same way. Yeah, um, he's kind of a well, quieter there's, personality. There's no name recognition there at all yeah. it's not he's not been doing fox news for a decade or whatever because yeah. bolton been there forever i mean his his biggest positions have been as campaign advisors on uh like i said mitt romney campaign and yeah. then the scott walker campaign which is once you, like you're saying those are those are <clears throat> not Excuse media me. positions they're behind no. the scenes guys and so i worry that his activity is kind of kind of it's not going to be reported not going to get same way. noticed the same yeah. way um, but I don't know. I mean, he, you know, just as a couple of examples from some of the profiles I read of this guy, he was, like I said, he was advising uh, Governor Scott Walker's campaign in 2016. Um, and one of the things that Walker said uh, was that he would tear up the Iran nuclear deal and and military action in Iran may be required on his first day in office. Oh, wow. All right. Like, so he was like <laughs> way over there. And, um Whew. And, you know, he went on with this thing that Iran's the biggest supporter of terror, which is another one of those talking points that's just 
Yeah. I think that we've dispelled that hopefully on this podcast yeah. before. When that, you when you start digging in, it's just not there. But you know, after Walker said this, O'Brien was on record saying that uh, Walker's um, stance on Iran exemplifies leadership, or oh, yeah. some some <laughs> phrase like that. So, yeah, um, I I think that we're going to end up with more of the same, and it's just not going to be covered as widely, yeah. which is which is worse. Kind of, yeah. Reason yeah. for concern, I would say. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, we're pushing for war in Iran because of this attack on the Saudi Arabian oil fields, or not? Actually, it weren't on oil fields. It was on a like a um, refinery. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I think like it was some kind of refinery. production facility. Yeah. Um. So, you know, now we're in a. Pompeo, of course, came out there and immediately said that Iran was responsible and that this was an act of war, and you know, and yeah. he he may even be right, but well, you he, can't come out immediately without any investigation whatsoever and make these kind of pronouncements. Well, and and if it is true that it is an act of war, which I would agree, if it is found that Iran absolutely did do this, and I I'm not one that exactly just trusts our intelligence agencies to just tell me this is true and it's not because we we've all seen how where that leads us but um if it is found that iran actually did do this um i would say it's an act of war but it's an act of war between iran and the saudis (laughs) yeah like if this is not a u.s war like i mean i get we've got interest there and whatnot but Mm -hmm. like this is this is a, a great example of something that they need to hash out yeah uh, and I think it's been overblown a little bit, but in a lot of ways, Trump did just come out and say that our military was at Saudi Arabia's disposal. Yeah, to which deal is with this. which, as me as an American, I have a problem with that. I mean, we're no, that's not that's not the case at yeah. all. Like, well, I, I mean, if we can back up a little bit on this um, oh yeah. and go into a little bit of the background, because the Houthis in Yemen claimed responsibility. Really? Yeah, uh, they said th- it was us. We sent a bunch of uh, a bunch of drones and missiles into yeah. um, Saudi Arabia to <coughs> take these fields, and and the I- Iranians also came out and said that we had absolutely nothing to do with this. Um, but uh, if the Houthis did it, then they were defending their own country, <laughs> you know, etc. Yeah. <clears throat> and we haven't talked about Yemen as much as we probably should have on this podcast. Uh, because what's been going on there is, is insane. <clears throat> you, you see, you're passing this off to me. <laughs> All right, this is not good. Because um, Saudi Arabia attacked the Houthis in Yemen yeah. originally. They okay. had a dispute with the government there. They wanted to overthrow the government there. Um, and Saudi Arabia initiated the war against uh, against Yemen. Okay. All right. Um, now, for the U.S.'s part in this... Uh, Obama joined with the Saudi Arabians. We provide we provided all kinds of military support to the Saudis in Yemen, um, and it was as a result of the Iran deal, uh, because of course the Saudis were livid about us <laughs> signing the Iran deal. Yeah. Um, and so there was a memo that was leaked where uh, Obama said. Um, I'm pretty sure the phrase was that we were going to support the Saudis in Yemen to placate the Saudis. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> so w- the only reason that we're involved in that war in the first place is because we signed the Iran deal. The Saudis were unhappy, so we decided to help them in this war against the Yemeni just to shut them up. Right? <laughs> just to, you yeah. know, a, a kind of a just tit to, for tat. Kind just of. to say, Hey, we're going along with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, now what's the, the way that Saudi Arabia has waged this war in Yemen is obscene. Um, yeah. they have, uh, attacked food production, yeah. um, and infrastructure, uh, farms and irrigation. Um, there are reports that they were bombing goat herds, um, wow. They were uh, they've attacked uh, sewage treatment and hospitals. Um, the result has been mass say, starvation, and it's the worst cholera outbreak in modern history. Yeah. That's what um, I always hear reported as, as the cholera. That's just insane. There. Yeah, I mean it, it is. It's medieval. Yeah. Uh, what they're doing, they are they are literally attacking the the food production and water yeah. and uh, health. 
capacity and just starving of, the people you know, out, starving them and and letting them die of illness. Yeah. And and that's the intent. Yeah. And again, for our part, we were providing targeting information. Yeah. Um, you know, midair fuel refueling. They stopped that, but we were providing midair refueling so that they could have longer bomber runs. Um, but if you think about that, we've been tr- providing targeting information, and they've been blowing up irrigation facilities and hospitals and so forth. Yeah, we're like, we're pretty culpable for that. Yeah. Like, I mean, um, they've also had a, a a really strong blockade <coughs> to prevent any kind of of um, importing of uh, food and water and medical supplies and so forth that they need in Yemen. Wow. Um, it is the worst humanitarian disaster around. I so remember, it truly is a war against the people. Then it it's is not, absolutely it's not a war. war against against, this isn't a war against the military. This is a war against civilians. Yeah, they they're waging a war of starvation. It, yeah. it is a genocidal war that we are supporting. Wow. Um, that the Saudis are waging in, in Yemen, yeah. and uh, the UAE was a part of this too. Um, but they have kind of backed out under international pressure. Yeah. But somehow we're still involved, even though we have more limited support than we did originally. Yeah. Um, and uh, the Saudis are still doing what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and then if you think about that, if you say that Iran was responsible, um, the U S sanctions on Iran, this maximum pressure campaign have yeah. had a similar impact yeah. to the bombing of food production in Yemen. Well, like, like we were talking about before the podcast, I mean, Basically, when when you have sanctions like that, you're you're basically doing a campaign against the citizens. Citizens. It's still a war. It's still just as ugly as a war. It's just a war against the people. It's not a war against the military bases or whatnot. You're trying to get the people to uprise against the government. And it has never ever worked. Well, and you you think about the the reverse of that. If you had like China or one of these countries do that to the US and be like, "Hey, mm-hmm. we're not going to trade with you." And on top of not trading with you, anybody that trades with you, we're going to completely disavow. Yeah. Well, and that's that's another part of it. Not like not only have we said that we will not and, and no American citizen this bothers me too. We can come yeah. back to that a little bit yeah. as far as individual Freedom freedoms. Goes. Yeah. <laughs> but um that you know the U.S. government and no American companies or citizens will trade with Iran. They've also said no other country will either. Exactly, um, we're doing the secondary boycott, uh, is what they call it. So any other country that trades with Iran, um, we're Loses cutting us. them off too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you think, just think about it in your own shoes. If if China did that to us, how do you think the people of this country would react to that? Do you think we'd be like, oh, well, yay, China's doing this great thing? That's never how it works. The the people or would we'd be saying what they expect isn't that the Iranians will say, "Oh, the U.S. government they're doing this thing to help us out and yeah. and uh, help us overthrow this terrible government." What they expect is that they'll say, "Our government is so terrible that we're all starving and everything. We need to overthrow this government." But that's not how it would work it here w- either. No, it, it wouldn't work that way here either. It would mm-hmm. be you people would become more patriotic and more supportive of the government that was in place, whether they agreed with it or not. Right? Because the you, while you may not like the government you currently have, mm-hmm. you definitely are not going to support the outside government. Right? You're just it's not that's not naturally how people react. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so um, and then they did have these two Saudi oil facilities that were attacked. Um, it cut in half the Saudi oil production, but it's yeah. almost back to normal already. It was yeah. only a week, week and a half ago, week and a half ago, I guess that the these attacks occurred. Yeah, um, like so it didn't take them long to get back together. I mean, it hardly yeah. seems worth launching a war. Um, and from what I can plus, just to throw this out there. Mm-hmm. If we end up in a full scale war here, I think production is going to. What's that going to do, gonna do to production? So if that's like your argument, mm-hmm. it it falls pretty quick. Yeah. Well, besides the fact that we have Iran is an oil rich country too, oh, and absolutely. we're not allowing them to trade their oil. Yeah. So I mean, like, if the if goal is to get more oil into the market, like we're losing that war. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everywhere you look. Yeah, we're doing that completely backwards. We're yep. preventing a huge portion of oil to. From being allowed onto the market, and then obviously if we actually start prosecuting a war in the Middle East, that's well, going to have a pretty severe impact on production. And something I've never really considered, I just kind of occurred to me just now, is that like Iran probably needs to unload this oil pretty soon. Like, I mean, we're only a decade or two from oil being 
not being a commodity like it is now. Well, it'll anyway, still be, it'll, it'll always, still be valuable. It'll always be valuable, but yeah, I'm just saying, like we're definitely heading towards an economy that will that it will be less sought after than it is now. Yeah, uh, that remains to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> I would say it's still the cheapest energy production out there. Yeah. Well, I guess natural and, gas and I, is the and cheapest. And I say a but, decade or two. I mean, yeah. it's not. We're not talking about next week here, but yeah. I mean, long term, if you know anybody's looking that far ahead yeah. we can talk about energy economy on a future podcast well yeah That's, i'm not trying to get into all of that I've, well maybe i am i don't know <laughs> <laughs> it just occurred to me it was just a thought <laughs> well um based on what i've read and this is just an amalgam of everything that i've read so near as i can suss out from the information that that i've gone through um it looks like the attack on these facilities came from two directions. Okay. One would be Yemen direction, Yemen way. I, I'm not trusting in the geographical knowledge of the Middle East of, <laughs> of the audience here. Sorry, everybody, if you know where everything is. But um, one of them, those directions is Yemen way, and the other yeah. direction is the Iraq-Iran way. Okay. All right. So here's some things that I find interesting about that. Um, it is possible then that the attacks didn't come from Iran, the ones that came from that direction, yeah. that they came from Shia militia, militias in Iraq. Okay. All right. So, and we know that Israel is already attacking Shia militias in <laughs> Iraq. And yeah. if this was something where, um, you know, Saudi Arabia determined that these attacks came from Iraq and they were going to uh, attack the Shia militias in Iraq, um, would we jump on board with that? Because here's the problem. Okay. Um, we allied with the Shiite militias in Iraq to overthrow the Sunni government. Really? And we are still fighting alongside the Shiite militias in Iraq uh, to fight off ISIS. Hmm. All right? Because ISIS yeah. and al-Qaeda are both Sunni uh, jihadist groups. Yeah. All right? So we are actually allied and fighting alongside the Shiite militias in Iraq. So Ir- Israel has already attacked our allies in Iraq. Yeah. And if it turns out to be Shiite militias that attacked Saudi Arabia, would Saudi Arabia, if Saudi Arabia attacked the Shiite militias in Iraq, would we go along with them? Would we like yeah. turn what, around and shoot we, the guys? We, yeah. Who do we side with here? <laughs> yeah. Because we're kind of in a pickle. <laughs> yeah. And this is part of the problem is that we've created <laughs> such a mess over there. Um, that we are fighting on both sides. Both sides, yeah. Exactly. Uh, of these conflicts. And so, and actually, for whatever reason, we have allied with the, the Sunni aligned countries, governments like <laughs> Saudi Arabia, yeah. um, against the Shiite aligned governments, Iran, Syria, and now Iraq, although Iraq was originally a Sunni. Uh, a Sunni government. They yeah. weren't a Sunni majority country, but they were a Sunni government. Government, yeah. <clears throat> and um, so, but the other problem is that, and and we've talked about this on the podcast before, uh, is that the, it's the Sunni jihadists that are responsible for all the terror stuff. Al Qaeda and ISIS are Sunni, but yeah. we're allied with Sunni governments, and we're fighting against Shiite governments. So somewhere along the way, we've, and we're already doing it in Yemen, yeah. and we were doing it in Syria as well. Um, we've already put ourselves in a position where we are fighting with the groups that attacked us on 9-11 that launched this whole war to begin with. Whole, so yeah. this excuse that we had to enter the war on terror that these Sunni jihadist groups attacked us on 9-11, yeah. we are allying with them against Shiite groups in, in the Middle East um, while we're also fighting against them in other countries in the Middle East. Yeah. And the reason that we did that is because, well, you know, Bush thought it was a good time to go ahead and take down Saddam Hussein. Mm. And But the problem there was that Saddam Hussein was a, a Sunni government in a majority Shiite country. And yeah. when we took... The, when we took down Saddam Hussein and the Shiites took over the country, well, then they allied with, of course, their natural ally, which would have been Iran. Yeah, yeah. And then we so- went, oh... Whoops! We swung the pendulum the wrong <laughs> yeah. way. Yeah, you know the whole we'd been trying to contain Iran all this time, yeah. and we didn't need to do anything at all because Iraq was containing because Iran. they were already doing it for us. Yeah, yeah. They, those two groups were in a standoff, and neither of them was really making any progress, and that would have been fine. We could have left it that way. Yeah, they might have fought, fought back and forth against each other again, like they did in the eighties. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah, not well, our problem. Well, and that's that's kind of the whole point anyway. It shouldn't be our problem. Mm-hmm. 
because the more we get the the more deeper you dig here, the worse it gets. The yeah. more you get, the more you get involved, the more things go to pot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so then they had the redirection, uh, you know, further along in the Bush presidency, where we realized that we had just empowered Iran in the Middle East. Yeah. And said, oh well, what do we do about this? We couldn't go back into Iraq and fight the same war, but on the other <laughs> side. All right. So then we, you know, we started supporting those groups that had attacked us on 9/11 in Syria, yeah. calling them the moderate rebels um, so that we could try and take down Iran's good friend Syria and and weaken Iran that way. The whole thing's absurd and obviously the answer to this is just to get all our people out of there. We're not doing anything. We're not accomplishing anything. We're not doing any good for anybody. No, and I mean these wars have been going on since the beginning of time. Like Mm. almost literally. Like I mean there's, there's never been peace here and we're not going to negotiate it now. I mean, if it ever comes, it'll come on its own. But we're not we're not doing anything to facilitate that by being involved. No. Um, I mean, I guess I guess people would try to make the argument that we're protecting our interests there or whatever. Yeah. But, but it but it really starts to feel like when you start digging in that that's not really what's happening either. Well, yeah. I mean, and the whole oil thing that's just a lie. Yeah. Um, that we're dependent on Saudi oil, so we need to make sure that the oil keeps flowing. No, we're not. It's we're not a next. True. We're a net exporter of oil in this country. Absolutely, um, we can we can get along just fine without Saudi yeah. oil. Fracking has been good to us. Yeah, as long as price stays high. <laughs> yeah, well, and actually, like the price required to make fracking profitable has come down also. Yeah. Um, so there was a time where fracking wasn't worth it unless oil was you know fifty five sixty dollars a barrel. Yeah. And then you can start making some arguments that we're that we're you know, fooling around over there, um, engaging in, in this stuff in order to keep oil prices high. But I don't really think that that's a good reason for a war. No. Yeah, absolutely. No. Like there's, yeah, it doesn't work. So protecting our own interests by destroying other people's production capacity so that we can keep the supply low and the price high. Like I'm, I'm not on board with that. And then of course us offering, um, Saudi Arabia to use our military for whatever they need. That's just completely insane. I, I think yeah. Tulsi talked about that quite Ooh, a bit. Yes, she did. So I started following her on um, Facebook mm-hmm. because I was like, man, like, I, like I said, I don't think I'd ever vote for her, but she knows her stuff foreign policy wise. Oh yeah, like there's no question. Like she she's <laughs> worth following, and she's the only one. <laughs> yeah, no, no joke. <laughs> the only one mm-hmm. on either side of the aisle. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, she was really unhappy about this whole thing that, you know, and it's, it's a good argument, if nothing else, that the, the Americans that sign up for the U S military signed up for the U S military to defend the United States, yep. not to go fight a foreign war for a foreign country yeah. to fight and die in the Middle East on behalf of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, of course they're already doing that in a, a well, number of countries across the Middle East, but yeah, you know this is very open. I was that fixing way. to say Trump's Trump's tweets were very open about it. Like it's because that's how Trump operates anyway. He doesn't operate all shadowy. Like whatever is going on is out in the open. Yeah. whether it good, bad, or in what the middle. What are you talking about? According to the Washington Post, he's told twelve thousand lies or something like that. I don't yeah. remember. Well, I don't doubt that the man lies a lot, but <laughs> but he's just he. He is what he is, you know. Yeah, he's I mean, not exactly a closed book. No, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you know what you're getting with. Him. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, I don't know if there's much more to say about that. Oh, actually, there is a little bit more to say about that because the UN General General Assembly um, is coming together this weekend. Oh, are they? Uh, I was going right? to say I hadn't heard anything about yeah. them in a well, while. Well, you remember that's why uh, Greta Thunberg came over from Europe. Uh, was in preparation for the UN General Assembly so she could make a big deal about climate stuff. And there were big protests about (laughs) climate all over the world. Um, I think I heard something like (coughs) 4 million people worldwide protested. That's a lot of people. Agreed. Um, Of course, there's almost 8 billion people on the planet, so it is not 1%, (laughs) not one-tenth of 1%. It's half of one-tenth of 1% that complaint um (laughs) but at any rate i I did want to point out and and this changed but originally the u.s denied visas for um the iranian foreign minister muhammad javad zarif and uh for the president uh hassan rouhani 
Um, really? They so the U.S. originally denied visas, preventing them from coming to the U.S. to attend the U.N. General Assembly, <laughs> which Iran is a part of. Which is they are part of. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's they funny. they did now issue. I, I guess on Thursday they they issued visas for them so that they yeah. can fly in on Friday for the, <laughs> for the assembly. But anyway, I thought that that was kind of interesting. And this is like another reason not to, you know, keep uh, the UN here in the U S. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, maybe, I mean, I don't yeah. <laughs> that we could, uh, we could use that kind of, I, I, just, I, I don't, don't think that you should be able to prevent. Um, I don't know. I think you should make them go through the TSA twice though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they can suffer like the rest of us. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, make <laughs> make sure that pose. Make, make them do it, man. Uh, they're not really so. free men anyway. I don't know if yeah. they would take offense in the same way that we do. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, but I, I did find that interesting, and I, I think that it's it's unfair to have the ability to prevent representatives like – from coming and, to a to, essentially to, ambassadors yeah. uh, from other countries to come to this country and meet with ambassadors of other countries because this is the meeting place yeah. and to say, well, we don't like that country, so we're just not going to let them talk to anybody. Like, yeah, all right. You, <laughs> you're no longer part of this. You can Skype. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, but like I said, we did end up issuing visas, but that it was even a question is kind of it's funny. Yeah, I thought it was entertaining. Yeah. Um, and uh, and there was really, I mean, we could talk about the climate stuff a little bit if, yeah. if you want, because um, there was, I mean, there was a lot going on. There seems to, be, like I say, I haven't been. They had so a quarter work. million people protesting in New York about it. Did they really? Yeah. I mean, the problem is that okay, so I've seen a bunch of interviews with people and it's mostly kids and yeah. why okay so there are adults at these things oh absolutely and there are people somebody that, has to bring the kids yeah there yeah right. <laughs> there there are carpool drivers yeah. lots of carpool drivers um but they uh they keep interviewing kids because i guess the new and maybe this works i'm not I'm not entirely sure, but the news clearly believes that if you want to influence people's opinions, then you need to show these kids that are so worked up about this problem. Yeah. And I mostly just feel sorry for the kids. Me that too. That they're so scared about this thing that does not even exist. Yeah. Um, Some of us would believe more than might, but... <laughs> and, they're, and they're so At best poorly might. informed. Yeah. Um, they just, like, repeat these talking points that you hear over and over again about how... It, it's well, the last chance to reverse direction. I heard one of these can, kids, he was like 16, he said, uh, we must stop climate change. What? <laughs> yeah, that statement in itself. <laughs> <laughs> you well, can't stop. Climate change has been happening for four and a half billion years. <laughs> yeah, the climate has been changing as long as there has been a climate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not... Oh. It's you can't make it up, man. Yeah, I, so I, I do. It, it does worry me, and I'm I'm really I'm actually I do feel bad about how how scared kids are. Of well, this. you can you can brainwash children to believe anything, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that's that's what's so bad about it. Is, but they don't make a good argument. It's not the people yeah. that you want to put on the news to talk about it. I don't think. <laughs> um, well, they don't. They obviously don't believe you because you're right. They they're parading them out there, left and right. Well. I wonder, because this girl Greta, she's on the spectrum somewhere. Like I've seen her. She's she's been around for a while. I, I caught oh, her yeah, a lot yeah. on. She was like twelve or thirteen. Yeah. She started doing this. Yeah. She's sixteen now. Yeah. Um, but she said that she um, she's somewhere on the autistic spectrum. I, I can't remember yeah. exactly what she like. I've never looked. I don't. Know. Anyway, yeah. doesn't. It doesn't really matter that much, but she's clearly somebody that like really dove in on this. Yeah, um, she found something to focus on, and she did. Yeah, and and she knows quite a bit about that one side of the story. Yeah, and I I keep wondering if someday she's going to start asking more questions. Yeah, and like figure some things out and go totally the other direction. It'd be interesting to see because all it's going to take is for somebody to, and what it'll take is for somebody to really challenge her mm-hmm. and push and, and just put some of the stuff in front of her. Mm-hmm. And, and you're so right. Just read some of this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because, because somebody like that, and I mean, I've seen her speak a few times. I mean, she seems intelligent mm-hmm. enough. So 
uh, you may be right. And a few years from now, she, she may be on the news yeah. on the other side of this. Of course, they won't pick her up then. Yeah. But. I mean, I've flip-flopped on many things in my life. And it was mostly what happened was um, I, I heard about some topic. And we can use climate change as an example. Yeah. I, I heard about some topic. Um, I started looking into it. And, I, you know, I started reading some research and, and so forth. And I was like, yep, okay, yeah, um, climate change is happening. We're the cause of it. Like, I see all this this evidence, et cetera. Um, but the – and maybe this is the difference, is that I kept reading. Yeah. Like, I didn't get to that point and say, you oh, yep, You this didn't is... make a decision and then stay there. Yeah. And, and Or stop my research at that point once yeah. I was kind of convinced that yeah. this is the way it was. Yeah. Um, and I kept reading and I kept reading and I kept reading. And then I started finding that stuff that was below the surface, mm-hmm. the stuff that wasn't being reported so widely because it didn't fit the, the standard the narrative. narrative. Yeah. And, uh, and I started saying – and I, I contacted our uh, state climatologist who um, did a – he did a uh, presentation to Congress – about how the climate change crisis was completely overblown yeah. and that the evidence that they had wasn't good evidence at all and that all these models kept falling apart and yeah. that they kept using the results of these models that had already been disproven and so forth. And so <laughs> yeah. I started emailing with him um, and he sent me a bunch of information to look at too. And this guy, and they say, you know, all the climate scientists agree. No, this guy is a climate, t- climate scientist. <laughs> like that's He's, what his title is. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he is... He is climate science. <laughs> he is our state climatologist. This guy knows as much as anybody. Yeah. Um, well, he and, is from Alabama, so. <laughs> well, I don't know if he's from Alabama. Uh, um, he's our state climatologist. Yeah, I think he teaches at UAH. Yeah, okay. Uh, but at any rate, he was on the um, uh, international, the UN's international panel for climate change. Yeah. And because he dissented, or this is how he tells it anyway. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. Um, because he dissented, he was thrown off. Wow. Yeah. I like, mean, you've got you. You better be lockstep. And, yeah, and that's so anti-scientific. Yeah, well, because the whole idea of science is to always be challenging whatever the theory is or whatever the belief is. You always have to be challenging it because nothing is written in stone. Yeah, none not of it, when it comes to science. None of it is law. None of it is truth. Not even it's the just, theory of gravity. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of positive comments about that podcast, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so, and that's exactly it. The whole the whole point of science science isn't science is a way of approaching things. It's not a body of knowledge. Yeah. And um, the whole point of science is to continue to challenge the beliefs, to continue to test it, to test it, to test it, to try and refine um, what you know about something, yeah. or what you think you know about something. And the whole point is to that you're. You're constantly trying to disprove what, you what think seems you to know. be, yeah, what be the, the truth of the matter. Yeah. And if you're unable to disprove it, it's then it's as, accepted. Yeah, it's as good a, a, an idea as any, yeah. or better than most, I guess, yeah. um, to explain what you observe. Um, but the whole point is to try and disprove. Yeah. And so to throw off a dissenter because they're a dissenter yeah. um, is just as anti scientific as it can be. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I don't have a good segue, but there was one other topic that I wanted to hit, um, before we get out of here. And part of it's because it's funny and part of it's because I, I do think that this is something that we need to address. Well, um, it's, it's it, partly because it's funny and partly because it's sad, man. Like, yeah. it's, it's just sad for humanity as far as I'm concerned. I and mean, it's one of those moments where I just don't want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> that old wow. Futurama yeah, episode, funny, you know? <laughs> um... So, and this is Justin Trudeau. Is Justin that how you Trudeau. pronounce it? Well, that's how uh, Owen Benjamin always says it. Ah, Trudeau. Trudeau. <laughs> In a very mocking tone. See, that's yeah. mockery. Oh, right? okay. Right? Yeah, so, all right. Um, so, Justin Trudeau, there's this big scandal because a, a picture came out of him at a party in 2001 in not exactly blackface, brownface. It was brownface, to be exact, which yeah. is a term I had never heard of until this happened. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, they always like, talk about blackface and, you know, whatever, but now it's black or brownface. Yeah. And so now they're they're saying, you know, is he going to continue? He should stop his campaign. He shouldn't try to be prime minister again. He should be removed from office, maybe. Well, and they're sort of... talking about this. Made, they're in the middle of their campaign now, and apparently they run like a short, abbreviated campaign. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and not like the U.S. where you campaign for two years. Exactly. 
exactly. It's it's really short. And the things I was hearing the other day, like this could derail him. Like if just if it takes him off topic long enough and it's too soon to tell right now. Mm-hmm. But if, if, if the meet if the news doesn't shift, he could be in trouble. Yeah. Well, and I'm torn on this because in some ways I say, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> right? He's definitely presented himself as the ally to everybody. Yeah. Um, he is the he's such the social justice warrior. Uh, prime minister yeah. um, always has been. Um, he, he even had some stupid line um, where he like corrected somebody from saying something like mankind saying person kind. Or I remember some, that. That some, was a some, big deal. I forgot about like that. that. Yeah, it was so ridiculous. Man, I forgot about that. You're right. He did do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like because obviously it's insensitive to woman yes, kind. I guess he or, did. God, I hate that guy. I forgot how much <laughs> I hate this guy. <laughs> Yeah, so um, and, and so it's this big scandal that you know he's uh, he was in brownface. Now the background on this is that he was at a an Arabian Nights themed party. Yeah, at a school that he taught at, and he went as Aladdin. Yeah, or something like that. I don't, yeah, he um, said Aladdin, but I don't actually know. Yeah, well, I, I wonder Who the knows? way it was reported whether it was actually Aladdin or some character from Aladdin. Maybe doesn't really matter though. Yeah. The point is, he was playing an Arab character. Yeah, um, and he went in, you know, like he was all dressed up and he had a wig and everything, and he used makeup to to darken, darken his, his complexion, skin. yeah, um, to match the character and. You know, now this is a huge deal. It's insulting. It's racist, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so let me just be clear right from the beginning. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> the, this whole argument about this thing is, is so absurd. And then he really did the worst is. thing that he could possibly do. <coughs> he apologized. He apologized. Yep. That's, you got to lean in, man. Yeah. He apologized. <laughs> he said, uh, well, you know. I it didn't was a realize time. That, yeah, it, I, well, I didn't realize that it was wrong. Well, yeah, that's because it's not. Yeah, yeah. Like 20 years ago, there was no problem with this. This was 2001. Yeah. It was almost 20 years ago. There was no wow, problem with this. that is almost 20 years ago. That's no the year problem I graduated. whatsoever. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's not suddenly it's, immoral, honestly. No, it's, no it, and there's still nothing wrong with it now. I mean, it's not like he was mocking anybody or anything like well, that. But that's exactly what they're saying. They're saying yeah. that he was he, he's mocking these cultures. Yeah. Uh, and so, Halloween, what is Halloween? Yeah. I mean, we're fixing to go into it now. I mean, mm-hmm. can I? Well, you're no, no, you're not allowed, remember? No, apparently like, not. You, you can't wear the sombrero and the big bushy oh, mustache. Man, man, I bought a sombrero I mean, just really for that. It's really a too, because Gary's in blackface right now. <laughs> oh, right? <laughs> you, you can't see it, but... Like, uh, well, <laughs> well, you don't know, but I was going to go as a convict this year anyway, so I'm just getting the end of the game here. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, you can't never run for office. Now. Yeah, right? <laughs> Um, so uh, the idea that he would do this as a mockery is just, yeah. it is so inane. I don't even know how to argue against it because there's no argument yeah. for it. No. Like, why is it that he would go as a character? You go as characters that you like. Yeah. Like, what happened to the idea that mimicry is the sincerest form of flattery? Well, exactly. Cultural exchange is the, is the greatest thing that has ever existed in, in yeah. humanity. Um, I mean, it is what a big part of what has allowed us to survive this long. Like we don't have the greatest evolutionarily speaking, yeah. we don't have the greatest physical traits. We're not the strongest. We're not the fastest. We're not, you know, yeah. we don't have any real tools of our like natural tools yeah. um, to do we what claws we do. Or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what we have is we have culture yeah. and we've used culture uh, to adapt to a, a, a the entire range of environments on this planet, actually. Yeah. Um, and there, there's people everywhere. <laughs> and the great thing about culture is that it is it changes faster and it's easier to pass along. Yeah. Right. And so, but what has also happened is that as groups have met in different places, they've exchanged the ideas that work best for them to allow both groups to survive. Yeah. And <clears throat> so, cultural exchange is the greatest thing that's ever happened to humanity. Yeah. And now we're trying to stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Like and this is a prime example, and it goes back to the whole is it, it would be different if he had been being disrespectful, like I'm going to be this Halloween, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's it wasn't meant that way at all. I mean, clearly the party he was at it was well received. Yeah. I mean, well, it was 2001. Nobody cared. Well, yeah, but <laughs> I mean, th- but that's what I'm saying though. I mean, it, it's it's not like he was being disrespectful. 
you know. And there's a part of me, so I'm kind of torn about this too, yeah. because there's a part of me that really takes some joy in seeing this guy <laughs> rent by a blade that he helped forge. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, like, while I would like to see Justin Trudeau go down, it's not about this. Yeah. This isn't something that's worthwhile. Yeah. Like, the, well, this whole... But here's, here's what makes it worthwhile, though, <laughs> because he's going to be brought down by his own people. Yeah, I mean, you know, the left eating itself. I'm, yeah. I, I, and I'm I get a kick out of this. Perfectly okay with that. Like, I, I'm not okay with it because it just perpetuates this these ideas. It does. I, I agree. And it, and it makes them useful tools and weapons against your political enemies. Well, it it, it does nothing but divide us, and mm-hmm. that's and that's a problem. Um, it absolutely is a problem. Yeah. This this whole whole woke culture has moved too far well, and and it means the wrong thing like i don't even understand what okay so what woke should mean is yeah. that you recognize that the government is the real enemy yeah that yeah. it's the one that's well, trying that, to divide us and it's the biggest threat to our freedom and our security <coughs> and while we're sitting here complaining about who said what and what they wear um are all these governments particularly ours, ours i would yeah. say um is out all over the world stealing from depriving and murdering people, including its own people. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, but it, it's in the nature of government to, to grow, accumulate power, subdue, and eventually oppress the people that it has control over. And in the meantime, we're ignoring that and looking to them even as the answer yeah. to this other problem. Yeah. And like, so all the woke people need to actually wake up. Well, there was there was a time when the when the term woke meant something. It actually meant that you were aware of exactly what you were talking about. That's what would that's what being woke would mean. It does it now. The term's been hijacked, mm-hmm. um, and that that has a tendency to happen. Yeah, it does. So. <laughs> Whenever you got something good, oh, those lefties just steal the word and make it something else. Yeah, make it their own horrible thing <laughs> because they're the creatives. The conservatives don't do that because they're not creative enough. <laughs> Apparently not. So. Um, I mean, I don't, that's that's all I've got. I, I hope that Trudeau doesn't go down about this. I, I hope he goes down about his like terrible leadership. Yeah. Um, but we'll see what happens. And like I said, I, I hope the woke people actually wake up and realize who the real enemy is. Yeah. Well, um, because it's to me, it goes back to the whole. It's all about peaceful man. I mean, if you're not. If you're not mocking anybody or being ugly, there's no reason for this to be a problem. Mm. I mean, there, there's just not, and it's unfair. And even if you are, really, well, in the free who cares? So, in the free society, it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, I mean, in the free society, the the citizens will handle it on their mm. own. You know, I mean, if if you don't like a business or you don't like something that somebody's doing, you just don't associate with them. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's there's no sense in going after people for offending you. Yeah. Um, it, well, if, and what's going on in comedy right now is crazy. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't really know enough to speak on it, but uh, you know, I kind of follow some of that. Like Dave Chappelle's gotten a hard time, mm-hmm. but and I love Dave. <laughs> His and, special is hilarious. And if anybody hasn't seen it, go watch it because it Maybe is amazing. Maybe not with your kids. Yeah, it, probably. It well, I watch be... the Chappelle with my kids, but I, yeah. I, I have it's, a different form of parenting. So. Yeah, it's not exactly family friendly. <laughs> it's definitely not um, family friendly, but it's hilarious. It's just, he's Chappelle's good. And there's, you know, and you go back and watch the old Chappelle show. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that, that how that show never got canceled, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, because it got really good ratings because the... Because so, it was good. Yeah. Here's here's the issue. Like, this whole um, social justice warrior woke culture thing, yeah. they're a an extreme minority. Yeah. They're just really, really loud. Yeah. Exactly. Most people don't feel that way. No. Of course not. And... Um, and according to Scott Adams, I guess uh, like one out of three people doesn't have a sense of humor. Well, and so those people are naturally going to go that direction. Yeah, right? and and certain people just look for something to be offended by, and that, that's actually I believe that I mean I'm not a psychologist, but that seems to me like a personality trait. Yeah. Like that there are some people out there that just naturally look for something to take offense to. Yeah, I, and from my perspective, the Chappelle Show might be. The greatest sketch comedy uh, program of all time. It, like it was so <laughs> so funny. Like I yeah. I would watch that and I would laugh out loud watching it by myself. Oh yeah, 
yeah. right? Like you don't need you somebody else to like help you giggle about things with it. Yeah. Like just just watching them is you just can't. funny. Like when you laugh out loud when you're sitting by yourself watching something, <laughs> it's funny. It's good, yeah. Um, and and it was extremely edgy and extremely offensive. And yeah. if you don't. If you don't think it's good, if you don't like it, like I understand yeah. why. Yeah. But if you don't think it's good and you don't like it, yeah, don't. You watch don't have it. a sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, exactly because it's 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 there, man. Mm-hmm. It's good. And the thing I've always loved about Chappelle, just to kind of put a pin in it though, is he's always taken on everybody. Mm-hmm. He doesn't pick on one group. It's not all one sided. He and in the Chappelle show, you can watch it. He picks on everybody. Yeah, it's it's just the way he is, and and I I got a lot of respect for that because I don't believe I agree with Chappelle on much of anything. But politically, politically, yeah. probably yeah. not. But but the fact that he will that he doesn't just pick a group and stick and mess with them, he he moves it all around, man. Yeah, <laughs> he picks on white people more than anything, and you he know does, what? But he picks on I'm black people too because it's funny <laughs> and it's funny, and he and he gets he gets everybody though. If you yeah. watch that show, he doesn't he doesn't pull punches. No, he doesn't. So, um, and, and I don't think that you can successfully in comedy. Yeah. Uh, at, at least not be as successful. And yeah. in his, I went back and watched his previous specials from a couple of years ago. Yeah. And he's got this whole part in it where he's talking about that. He's like, you know, when I say something and and it's offensive to you and <clears throat> you think that I'm picking on you or or whatever, he says it, it's not it's not that I'm I'm out there because I'm out there trying to get you. I'm saying it because it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And just seeking the funny. Yeah, you know exactly, and uh, and, and it is. And funny. the guy that I talked to you, that I mentioned to you before we came in here, while I was mixing my drink, yeah. um, I was drinking a gimlet tonight, by the way. I haven't ah. had one of those in a long time. It's so good. Uh, I finally oh, got you, the, I got oh. it balanced right. Nice. Um, but uh, Patrice O'Neill, yeah, God rest his soul. Um, Patrice O'Neill was like that too. Like he yeah. was incredibly offensive, and but he just like he would say anything because. It was funny. Because it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> He's exactly. just looking for the funny. Looking for the humor, man. <clears throat> and, need more of that in the world. Yeah. And, you know, any good comedian is going to do that. They're not worried about offending people. They're just looking for something funny. Yeah. I, that was one of the things that I really enjoyed about when I was watching, or not watching, I guess, but... And I actually, I recommend anybody do this. Um, on YouTube, <coughs> you can find from Owen Benjamin, I can't remember what it's called. It's like uh, 60 Minutes in 7 Days or something like that, um, where he's trying to to create an entirely new hour special ah, in a I've week. heard of this but I haven't seen it. It's great. Yeah. Like and and I used to listen to uh Why Didn't They Laugh yeah. from him. Yeah. Um which was ah, a, a yeah. great podcast that he used to do where he would take um he would just like break down these jokes. And he he works in 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 humor in an area that I really enjoy anyway with um juxtaposition and paradox and irony like these are things that i i find generally funny anyway and this is what he likes to play with yeah and so i think that he's an, an hysterical comedian yeah. um and uh but he and why didn't they laugh he would take and he's constantly working on new material like when we went yeah. and saw him he had a p- piece of paper where he had just like <laughs> some ideas apparently written yeah, down he that he would stuff. go to every once in a while oh, let's try this one you know yeah. <laughs> and but he's he's modifying these jokes all the time like yeah. he's refining them constantly and so uh the why didn't they laugh thing was where he would take something that he like he knew that there was a kernel of funny. There, there. Something like, is good with yeah, this. Yeah. There's there's it's something here. funny about this idea. Yeah. And then he would go through all these permutations as he was trying to develop the joke. How to like, present it. Yeah. And and it was questions of like, you know, the, any one of these things, it is funny. And if people don't laugh, it's because I did something wrong. Yeah. It, I, I didn't set it up right. I didn't deliver it right. I didn't, you know, I didn't create the right atmosphere. I didn't, there's something that I'm doing wrong that is making it not funny to them. Because... Yeah. There's funny there. It's in here. Yeah, yeah, I just haven't found it yet. And listening to him go Working through and out. analyze yeah. like what he needed to do differently and change how he had to change how he was how he was telling the joke yeah. to make it funny to people was really really interesting. Yeah. And and you get some of that in the uh, sixty minutes and seven days or interesting. I, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but something like that. I'm gonna have to go look it up. 
Yeah, it's it's on YouTube. Because I've heard free. of it before. It's I've so heard, worthwhile. Yeah, I've heard it mentioned before in other circles. So. And he's got full specials available for free on YouTube anyway. So oh, he's if, funny anyway. If you've yeah. never listened to him, I recommend you do. You yeah. will be offended. Yeah, I, I'm like well, I'm going to go ahead and prepare you for that. Like he yeah. he is one of those people that has absolutely said like you can't tell me that I can't say some word. Yeah, he's he's definitely <laughs> <laughs> yes. You 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 said that perfect because that's exactly the angle he takes. Yeah. He's yeah, he's uh, looking the for the him, offense. Yeah, yeah, the more you tell him he can't say something, the more he's going to say it. Yep, yep. Oh. But he's so he's a riot. He's good. Yeah. Um Anyway, I guess that's as good a point as any. You had, didn't you have some quote? You had a quote to finish this up with. Did have a quote. A little bit of a callback, I guess, um, to earlier in the episode. Yeah. So um, this is Ron Paul. This is just a tweet he put out this week that that I kind of felt was thought was fitting. Is so he, so he says President Trump has increased sanctions on Iran. Sanctions are not a more humane alternative to war, but just another form of war. Uh, they are not. They are perhaps the cruelest form of war, um, war, cruelest form of war, because they do not target military adversaries. They target civilian populations. Yeah. So, and it, there's a lot of truth in that. Kind of like we talked about tonight. I mean, it, it would almost be more humane to attack the military than it would be to attack the citizens. Yeah, so, absolutely. At least those people signed up for it. Um, so again, like you, you're out of town for part of next week. Uh, I don't know when we're going to get the next podcast out. I mean, I think, I still think we try to shoot for next weekend. Okay. I, I think that's going to be the goal. I'm not going to make any promises. I'm going out of town, a lot of stuff going on. So mm-hmm. we'll do the best we can. Um, we're going to try and do something, uh, more economics depending on what happens. So we may start war with Iran in the next week, and then we'll definitely have to talk about that. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, we were talking about maybe going into some stuff about the Fed because um, Trump has been uh, pushing for – well, the Fed did lower interest rates uh, this past week, yeah. and um, Trump's been pushing for them to go back to zero or lower. Yeah. And for the those whole... of you that don't know the idea behind negative interest rates, there's – it's – I think we need to talk about it on the show, and I think it's going to take a solid episode to break it down. And honestly, that's some stuff I need to – I mean, I've heard of this term, negative interest, interest rates. I can't really say I understand it yet, though. Yeah. So well, I'll be they're... interested to dive in and, and try to do some research on it. They're doing it some places in Europe. and They are. It's, um, it's started. The – it's easy enough to to look at like this. Um, if you are offering somebody uh, to pay back less than they borrowed, yeah. the only reason that you could, or, or well, no, that's probably the backwards way of looking at it, right? Okay. Um, if uh, I don't even know if I can explain it. the The idea of negative interest rates is that um, you actually get. More of a return for borrowing. Yeah. Right? Like if you borrow a (coughs) thousand, negative interest rates would mean that, you know, when you pay it back, you only pay back 900 or something like that. Okay. I mean, that's the way I understood it when I, when I, because I haven't read into this deep yet, but that was the way I understood it is if you, like, like you said, you borrow a grand, you owe 900. Yeah. Um, And the only reason to do that is if you think that that 900. Yeah. Is going to be like a thousand is going to be worth that much less. Yeah. Well, right? I mean, and that's that's what we need to discuss on this. Mm-hmm. Like, what is this going to do to inflation? Like, I yeah. mean, or will um, it? Or will it do anything? Well, I mean, it, it's a reaction to inflation. Essentially, it means that you know that you don't think that the money is going to be worth as much when it comes back to you anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It's um, there's uh, no other is, reason. There's no other reason to to, to do, do it, it that way. Yeah. Well, that you're what you're betting on is essentially that when they pay you back that nine hundred, yeah. um, that that nine hundred is more than you would have gotten otherwise. Is yeah. is actually worth Has, more than the than the eight hundred. Well, like that the thousand that you lend is now only worth eight hundred. Yeah. Right. Huh. So you yeah. know you still lost, but you didn't lose as much. But you, yeah, you hedged it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, we gotta. I've, I've got to do some reading. Yeah, I, I I'll, I'll come int- up with a better way of presenting that. I'll, I'm definitely I'll get a good example. I'm definitely interested to talk about it though, mm-hmm. because 
and I'm definitely looking forward to reading into it because yeah. it's it, it, economics always intrigues me. So, so next on the Liberty Mike in the Fed, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> Guest show title alert. Um, and so uh, in the meantime, you know, follow us everywhere, uh, like, share, do all those other things that help us get out to more people. Yeah. Um, and uh, in the meantime, try to stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later.